Recently, one of you put in the comments the, something about uh, Steven Anderson and Ken Hoven meeting together again. And I kind of thought, huh? And so I just uh, did a little search last night. And uh, today is Wednesday, the 6th of April, 2016. And I did a little search and uh, came up with some interesting information, which I will be sharing in this video. And um, I found it interesting because way back when uh, Jeffrey Greider from NowTheEndBegins.com when he had actually done an interview with Ken Hovind and they got kind of into a debate on the rapture issue, um, he brought up the subject, Jeffrey brought up the subject of Steven Anderson. And Ken Hovind was just playing dumb and, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I remember him. And, and uh, yeah, he visited me in prison and, and uh, yeah, I, I wasn't really sure what he was after, you know, and things, and, and, and uh, yeah, he's in the, you know, because Ken Hovind's in the After the Tribulation propaganda Catholic film that uh, Andersnake put out, but he was, oh, I, I'm not really sure, yeah, you know, yeah, well, he's at it again, Ken Hovind, and I'm going to play this little video clip here, this is from the, I think, March 16th, 2016, just a couple weeks ago here, um, broadcast with Kent Hovind and he talks about meeting with Steven Anderson and being part of a new film that Anderson's coming out with but he just doesn't remember what the film is called or what the interview was about or anything else. Now listen, pay very close attention because at the very beginning of this Ken Hovind is answering emails and um, he says that he gets an email from a student from Mercy College in New York. Now, if you look into what Mercy College is, Mercy College is a Catholic university, Roman Catholic. Now, why would a Roman Catholic student enjoy Stephen Anderson's movie, After the Tribulation? Why would a Roman Catholic student enjoy listening to Stephen Anderson? Hmm, interesting. So let's watch this clip. I'm going to make a few comments afterwards. John writes, uh, the Jews and Pastor Stephen Anderson. My name is John. I'm 25 years old from Mercy College in New York. I would first like to say I love your work and all your debates. I think it's amazing how you defend creation and refute evolution. Oh, it's midnight. I got to go to bed. Just a little note. I never even knew people defended creation until I heard you with Steve Anderson. Amazing video after the tribulation. I just wanted to know if you have seen Steve Anderson's new film, Marching to Zion. I have not seen that one. I, he flew me out to Arizona. I didn't know it was him until a couple days before it happened. I thought I was going to video with Paul Wittenberg, Wittenberger, who does a lot of videos. So I flew out to Arizona, and Steve Anderson interviewed me for his film. Um, I forget the name of the film. Anyway, I did a couple hours worth of interview. They'll cut and paste the footage, and I'll be in whatever film that's going to be. So I don't, I don't agree with Steve on some things, and um, I, I'm not part of his... Uh, um, I don't belong to his church. I think he's doing a great job. I wouldn't fight him, but I don't, I don't agree with him on some things. Okay, so uh, Ken Hoven's not part of his, um, you know, almost like he was going to say unit or, you know, mind control programming system. <laughs> Never a thing like that, I'm sure. But, uh, I, you know, we're not, I wasn't, I'm not part of his church. I'd never fight him. I think he takes a lot of good stands. I don't agree with him and everything. You'd never fight Steven Anderson? <laughs> This raving little wild heretic that he is, this this just devil-filled, oh, he's disgusting. Hates people, praying for the death of the president, saying we need to execute sodomites and all this other stuff. Hateful little creature that he is, you know, and Ken Hovind wouldn't fight against it. But I find it rather ironic that Ken Hovind says, you know, he flew me out there. I didn't know it was, know it was him, and, and uh, you know, I thought it was Paul Wittenberger, and I was going to be in this video, and... I don't really know the name of the video, and I talked for a couple hours, and I just really don't know what it was all about. Excuse me? You mean to tell me a guy that's supposedly as intelligent as uh, Ken Hovind isn't going to remember the name of a film that he's going to be in? I mean, what would you think of me if, if all of a sudden I'm absent for a while or something? Well, I'll say it this way, okay? I'm, I'm going for a couple hours. I get back, and my wife says, where were you? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> Do you think she'd be a little upset? Yeah, rightfully so. I mean, if I, if I came on and I said, hey, I'm going to be in some upcoming video, and I saw some of you in the comments said, um, wow, really, what is it? I don't know. They interviewed me for a couple of hours, but I don't know what the film's about. 
okay, there's only two options with this thing. Number one, he is purposefully covering up for what this film is. And I'm going to show you what the film is that he's a part of too, by the way. Number one, he's purposefully lying to the viewers. He's concealing it. I don't, I can't really, I don't, I don't remember. That's a lie. Okay. If you go and you're interviewed for a couple of hours, you will remember what the thing's about. All right. Obviously. I mean, years and years ago, um, myself and, and a brother, Jesse Dulesky, we were the two elders, I guess you could say, of uh, Bible Believers Fellowship. And we had a guy that wanted to join our group and, and things. And, and we always talked to him out in a public place first. I mean, we're not meeting in public places with our our house church at the at that time. We were meeting in our private homes. So, you know, you be careful. You don't just allow heretics to come in. Well, this guy, we met him at a public place. And I mean, within five minutes, I was just like, no, <laughs> this guy's a wing nut. And he was trying desperately to try and, you know, oh, well, I, I, yeah, I would probably agree, but maybe, I don't know. He was trying to cover it up, and I could just tell the guy was just, he was nuts. And he was. I called him Crazy Charlie. I mean, the guy was, he was weird. <laughs> very, very, very weird. Hyper-Calvinist, post-tribber, of course, posty. You know, he was nuts. He had a lot of things. Big InfoWars fan and all this other stuff. So, I mean, five minutes. And the Holy Spirit within me was just like, eh, 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 you know, no, <laughs> this guy's bad. I mean, you listen to Martin Richling five minutes, if you can make it five minutes, and you're just like, Ugh, you know, I mean, Steven Anderson, you listen to him for a little bit, and you're going, huh, <laughs> you know, but Ken Hovind can go out and speak for a couple hours to him, and it's just like, I don't remember what it the movie's called, or I don't really know, you know, that seems kind of peculiar. You say, well, okay, but you don't know. Maybe Ken Hoven is telling the truth. Well, if Ken Hoven is telling the truth, then that would prove conclusively that Steven Anderson and Paul Wittenberger are part of a mind control operation. To have some guy, they call him up. He doesn't even know who's sending him out there. I just, I'm going out to see Paul Wittenberger. I got to get on the plane. I got to go. What's it about? I don't know. You know, and he gets there and he speaks for a couple hours and he comes back and he goes, they say, what'd you do? I went out there to talk to him about something. What's the name of the film? I don't know. What's it about? I don't know. If he's honest, then he's under mind control. He's been brainwashed. He's somehow forgotten it. The, the amnesia wall's been built in there, and he doesn't even know what he said. I mean, it's weird. Weird. You know, why can't Hoven would just either openly lie or prove that he's under mind control? by Steven Anderson. And if, and if there is mind control there with Steven Anderson, then it proves what I've been saying for a while, that Steven Anderson is part of the Jesuits. He's a Jesuit temporal coadjutor, or he's part of some kind of a military operation thing. Military intelligence is run by the Jesuits. So, you know, as came out in uh, the interview with Eric Phelps, uh, but it, this thing just stinks. You say, well, but how do you know what the video is about? Well, I'm going to show you. Here's framingtheworld.com. Look at this screenshot here. I'm going to show you down through here. Um, Kent Hovind is in the new movie about uh, America being Mystery Babylon. Mm, isn't that so wonderful? Yes, it's no longer the Roman Catholic Church. It's, you know, you read Revelation 17 and 18. That's about America. I mean, America's colors, you know, three cheers for the purple and scarlet. I thought it was red, white, and blue. Oh, uh, what uh, verse 4 in chapter 17 of Revelation says, her collars are purple and scarlet. And she's a city, not a country. You know? And I saw a little thing, Andrew's stupid there, and he's going, he's going, now, when it says city in Revelation 17, that's just symbolic. It's actually, a city could also mean country. That's purely Roman Catholic teaching. I mean, purely Roman Catholic teaching. I mean, maybe that, maybe, just maybe, that's why a university student at Mercy College in New York would enjoy watching Stephen Anderson. Stephen Anderson, the post-tribber, Roman Catholic. Stephen Anderson, the Jew-hater, replacement theology teacher. Oh, again, Roman Catholic. <laughs> I mean, it's disgusting, you know? And this woman reigns over the kings of the earth. And you know what Andrew Snake said? I saw this little sermon. I'll probably come out and debunk this thing too. Not sure yet, depending on time. But uh, he said that, that you know, obviously the world is run by 
uh, from New York City with the United Nations there, and it's the Jews that run the United Nations. And you know, there's there's as many Jews in New York as there is in Jerusalem. And he, I mean, he says this. You can watch. He did a little uh, uh, sermon out this uh, Roger Jimenez's little cult building out there, and he actually comes out and says this. You know, and it's funny too because the city sits on seven mountains. Um, and, but don't worry because, see, city doesn't really mean city. It means country. And America sits on seven mountains. You see, it's becoming clearer all the time that Stephen Anderson is a Roman Catholic asset. He, it, this is why I continue to stand against this guy. People go, oh, you're obsessed with him. Hey, let me tell you something. If we don't stand against Stephen Anderson... The Vatican is going to use him to make the world think that King James Bible believers are crazy lunatics that want to see sodomites put to death. Okay? And guess what? They're going to have SWAT teams kicking our doors in and hauling, off, hauling us off to jail because we're hate criminals. If we do not openly speak out against Stephen Anderson and say he's a Jesuit coadjutor. Okay? I'm going to show you in an upcoming video. I'm going to be talking about how to spot Jesuit infiltrators. Very informative video coming up, okay? I'm telling you right now, these Catholics, they've infiltrated all Protestant denominations, and the one group that's left, the one group, are King James Bible believers. Dispensational King James Bible believers. And you will not find one Roman Catholic apologist that stands for the rapture being before the time of Jacob's trouble. Not one. You will not find one defending dispensationalism. Okay, And you will not find one Roman Catholic that says that Mystery Babylon is their own city, Vatican City. And if you're dumb enough to think that the Vatican has less power than the United Nations in New York City, if you're that stupid, you know, I mean, Revelation 17, verse 6, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Uh, isn't that interesting? Because the blood of the martyrs and saints of Jesus was shed only since the 1940s. What, 1945, I guess, when the United Nations building was built. It's only been since then that the blood of saints and martyrs of Jesus has been shed by the United Nations. I mean, who believes this junk? Revelation 17 is clearly about the Vatican. They're making... yeah, uh, just uh, it, It's disgusting. So uh, I would not support Ken Hovind or Steven Anderson or any of these wicked devils that are in this movie coming up. Chuck Baldwin is another one. You know, I heard him years and years ago. He's been on the Alex Jones show, you know, Jesuit Jones, you know, these guys. He's, he's been on there. He, he runs in these patriot circles and stuff. And I heard him say that I have friends that are amillennial and friends that are postmillennial. I myself am premillennial. I thought, no, you're not. No, you're not. If you are premillennial... King James Bible believing, you won't have any friends that are amillennial or postmillennial because they're not going to want to be around you. All right? <sighs> be very, very careful who you listen to. You know, I had, again, somebody put a comment on my channel and they said, you know, I get a little frustrated because it's like Martin Richling's wrong and, and Stephen Anderson's wrong and Ken Hovind's wrong and the, Mike Hoggard's wrong and this guy's wrong and that guy's wrong. Who am I supposed to listen to, Brother Brian? And I said, the Holy Spirit and the book that he gave you. Test all things. Prove all, prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. How many times do I got to say it? It's the book. It's the book. You say, but I'm supposed to have teachers and preachers above me and things. Well, you can learn from teachers and preachers, but you know what? There's only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Or do you have to go through a surrogate, we'll say? You have to go through a mediator, mediatrix, if you're a Catholic. You know, I mean, who do you have to go through? Or do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ where he can teach you his word and he can point out that guy's false, that guy's crooked? You know, the Bible talks about in John chapter 10 about the voice of a hireling. The sheep don't hear it. They're going to like, whoa, that guy, you can know. 
And I'll grant you, you know, you might be early saved and stuff like that, and you're still trying to develop that relationship with the Lord. Okay, fine, off some grace for you. But if you've been saved for a while, you ought to be able to spot these people. Holy Spirit ought to be able to say, run from that one. He's a fake. That's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And Stephen Anderson and Ken Hovind are very, very much wolves in sheep's clothing. Catholics in sheep's clothing, actually, if you want to be really specific. So I'm going to be bringing out more stuff on this in the future, this whole Mystery Babylon thing. I already have a sermon on it. Uh, I don't even know if it was 10, 2010. It's been many, many years ago that I did this study um, on this subject of Mystery Babylon. Again, uh, a lot of my you know, training that I had, um, the Lord just gave me 10 years of life where um, I was self-employed and I was a single man, so I just... I spent all my time just reading and studying and reading and listening to sermons. I mean, I just listened to thousands of sermons and hours and hours and hours, watched a lot of videos. A lot of them you see behind me here, a lot of good teaching, a lot of good preaching, you know, a lot of good stuff. Uh, I didn't, I'm not just some kind of little novice or something like that. I mean, the Lord's given me a lot of time to study. And I understood from early on the uh, standard operating procedure, if you will, of Roman Catholics and Roman Catholic infiltrators. There's a couple little things that they need to cover up, a couple little things that they need to get through, and that they want to get it enmeshed into the King James Bible-believing movement. Um, they, want to, they want to destroy your faith in a pre-trib rapture. They want to destroy any kind of dispensational teaching. They'll boldly say they're non-dispensational. They want to turn you against the Jews, and they want to destroy the identity of Mystery Babylon from your King James Bible. Because all those things point at their institution as being wicked. And they might be right in 90% of their stands. But they'll get you in a couple of those areas. And they'll start to mess with it. And they'll start to twist the Bible and tweak it and things like this. I've seen it for years and years and years and years and years. Long before I ever made my first video. All right? I've been dealing with them. I've dealt with Catholics uh, going out door to door. I've seen it on the street. Uh, I've gone street preaching and things like that. I know about Roman Catholics. I have a lot of the Catholic books. I know how to spot these people. All right? And I'm telling you right now, Anderson, that's why way back in 2009 I started kicking him. I came out with a, st a study on post-trib rapture thieves. It's, not, it's very ironic because I was talking to my wife about this, and I said way back then in 2009, I literally had to search very, very hard to find anybody that was even making videos defending the uh, post-trib rapture system and attacking the pre-trib. I mean, I, I put the first part of that study, I put just about everybody I could find into that study, playing their audio and then pausing them and going through and showing you the scriptures why they're wrong, why they're lying. And it's still an audio sermon, still available on my channel. Post-trib rapture thieves. There's three parts to it. All right. Including Roman Catholic apologists and a Franciscan friar. Brother Joseph, I think his name is, or something like this. A Franciscan friar, a monk, uh, attacking the pre-trib rapture and using the same exact things. It wasn't heard of till 1830 with John Nelson Darby. Hmm, interesting. All these guys saying the same things, and then you'll hear like Ken Hovind, and he'll say, um, you know, the church, historically, the church was always post-trib. Who's he talking about? His church, the Vatican. Oh, yeah. So, more to be coming out as the battle rages on and on. Um, I intend to keep fighting against Stephen Andersnake and his little satanic group, uh, the Jack Hiles um, group. He came from Jack Hiles, Hiles Anderson College. Um, I don't think he's related to Russell Anderson of the Hiles Anderson, but the point is uh, that's where he came from. Uh, he didn't graduate. He left early, you know, probably because I guess the Jesuits just couldn't wait to put him in service, you know, any longer. They said, we got to get you now, you know. <laughs> but uh, he's a sellout. He's not a Christian. He preaches a false gospel, and he preaches a lot of false doctrines that line up with the Catholic Church. So, unreal. And I don't know when this stupid little documentary of his is to, supposed to be coming out, but, uh, you know, We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, just wanted to put this video out and uh, please.
Please keep us in your prayers, and we will see you in the next video.